I think what is going to be of more interest for us is going to be how the relationship with China develops through this volatility. We're seeing China this week having uh, responded with restrictions for the rare earths and critical minerals supply into the US. That's significant because 90% of the global supply comes from China at the moment. So that, that move really emphasises the criticality to develop some diversification in these supply chains and I think is is really just underscoring the ASM strategy to take a mine product all the way through to metal as an independent, uh, vertically integrated alternate supply chain is absolutely the right strategy. Well, China's dominance in the rare earth supply chain has been well understood for a very long time. And that's really what's been driving in more recent times countries like Australia, Korea, the US, as, as well as many others, identifying diversifying the supply chain as a strategic imperative. For ASM, we are uniquely positioned to be part of that solution. We have got our Dubbo project shovel ready, able to be in production well before 2030, uh, providing the both light rare earth and heavy rare earth oxides that are so critical to this supply chain. Uh, but we've also got our Korean metals facility, which is already in production, producing the light rare earth metals and those specialist alloys that are needed for the high performance magnets that are essential in these defense applications, in the advanced uh, manufacturing industry and importantly in this emerging clean technology. Well we've always seen the US as an exciting opportunity for ASM and our engagement strategy with the US is well advanced. The first customers that we announced for our alloy product from our Korean facility were both US emerging magnet producers, USA Rare Earths and Novion Magnetics. We have uh, very strong funding support from US Exum already for the construction phase in our Dubbo project. Uh, and we've got discussions advancing with the Department of Defence uh, to be able to have uh, funding coming both directly into our Dubbo project, but also potentially replicating the Korean metals facility in the States. So, you know, for us, this is a very exciting opportunity now that the new administration is so strongly committed to developing the manufacturing industry in the US. It gives us an opportunity to have that direct domestic source from Australia through the metals facility in the US into this emerging market. Uh, it's exciting for us. Well, as we've progressed our US engagement strategy, that's been hand in hand with the support of the Australian Federal Government, particularly the Critical Minerals Office that's established in Canberra, as well as the Australian Embassy in Washington DC. They've got a, a task force uh, specifically looking at building the alliance in policy between the US and Australia to develop this uh, critical mineral supply chain and we've been working very actively with them. Well with volatility comes opportunity and after a prolonged period of talk we're really excited that we're about to start to see action. ASM is so well positioned to be able to be part of that action. We've got uh, a study underway at the moment for our Dubbo project uh, looking at how we get the rare earths to market quicker with a lower cost first phase execution step and uh, we're looking forward to giving market an update on the first phase of that assessment in the middle of this year. We're also seeing much more activity with our Korean metals plant, uh, with customers looking to source materials immediately from that facility. So uh, again, we're looking forward to giving the market updates on the ramp up as those discussions progress. 
And then lastly, you know, the discussions that we've got underway with the DOD and USXM uh, will continue to be a very strong focus. And it's going to be interesting to see how the policies continue to develop to strengthen their resolve to establish these supply chains for the states.